Hello everyone! Today we'll be looking at how to create a first person sprinting system that also drains and regenerates stamina, as well as a simple stamina bar UI widget like this one. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to create an input mapping so that we can have a keyboard key that starts the sprinting. I'm using the basic first person template from Unreal, so I'll go to the content folder and then into first person, input and then actions. Here we can right click and go up to the input section and choose input action. Let's call it IA underscore sprint. We don't actually have to change anything in it, so let's head over to the input folder and select the IMC underscore default input mapping. Here we can assign a key to our sprint. This is where we can set what inputs trigger different input actions and how they should function. So let's press the plus button up here and create a new mapping. Click the drop down and search for the IA underscore sprint action we created earlier. Press the small keyboard button here and we can just click what key we want sprint to use. I'll set it to shift. That's all here, so let's save and close the window. Now we'll do all the functionality, which will be done in the player character blueprint. For me, that can be found in the first person blueprint folder. And it's called BP underscore first person character. We'll start off by creating two bool variables that will be driving a lot of the functionality. So let's call the first one is moving and the second one is sprinting. And when that is done, we'll also be creating a function that will hold the different movement speeds. So go ahead and press the plus button here at the functions and we can call it movement speeds. Now from the output here, drag out and connect a branch node and connect the is sprinting bool to the condition, which means that we will check if we are sprinting and then change the movement speed based on that. First off, we need a reference to the character movement, which can be found up here in the components. So go ahead and hold control and drag out the character movement component. And from that, we will drag out and search for set max walk speed. Here, we can now set how fast the character will run. For testing purposes, I'll set this to 1000, but do test around a bit what makes sense for you. Then connect the true output from the branch into the walk speed node. Then we'll duplicate the walk speed node so we can set the regular movement speed as well. Let's go ahead and also connect the character movement component to this and then the false output from the branch. I'll set the regular walk speed to 300 since that is what my project is set to. If you're unsure what your default walk speed currently is, go up here to the components window and press the character movement component and search for walk speed in the right window here. All right, we're done for now, but we'll be back in a bit later. For now, let's compile and save and go back to the event graph. Now we want to create a check for if we're currently moving or not. So let's add an event tick node. Then we can press alt and drag out the is moving bool to set it. Connect it to the event tick and let's set up the conditions for it. Right click and search for get velocity. Leave the target as self. So we want to get the current velocity of the player and from the return, drag out and search for vector length so that we can get a float value back. From the vector length node, connect it with a greater than node and leave the second input at zero and connect the output to the is moving input. Here, we're simply now checking if the character's current velocity is greater than zero and if it is, we will set is moving to true. We want to know this later, for example, to check if we should drain stamina while pressing sprint or not. We can leave this for now and move on to giving the sprint input we created some functionality as well. So right click and search for the IA sprint input we created at the start. Press the small arrow to show more of the outputs and then from started, drag out a branch and set the is moving bool as the condition. Then alt drag out the is sprinting bool and connect it to the true output and set the condition to true. Then drag out and connect the bool to the movement speed function we created. Now on to when we release the key. Alt drag out the is sprinting bool again and connect it with the completed output and leave the condition on false. And then connect this one into the movement speed function as well. What we're doing here is that when we press the sprint button, it will check if we're moving. And if not, it won't do anything. But if we are, it will set the sprinting bool active and then run the movement speed function. Let's also tidy up a bit and section off the different areas with some comments. And now let's create the functionality for regenerating stamina and draining stamina. Start with right clicking and adding a custom event. Call it drain stamina and then create a second custom event and call it regenerate stamina. From the drain stamina node, drag out and create a branch and add is moving as the condition. Then let's create two new variables that will hold some stamina numbers. The first one we can simply call stamina 
and make sure it is an integer. We only want it to hold whole numbers and no decimals. Then we create a second variable and call it max stamina and keep it as an integer as well. Then alt drag out the stamina variable and connect it to the true output of the branch. Now we'll add a subtract node here so that we can set how much stamina will drain. Drag out the stamina variable and connect it into the top of the subtract node and in the bottom input put 1. If you want your stamina to reduce faster, you can change this later to a higher number. Next we'll drag out from the subtract node and create a clamp node. This node will make sure that we cannot get a negative amount of stamina while running and will cap out at 0. So leave the minimum value to 0 and then drag out the max stamina variable into the max value. This makes it so that the stamina cannot go below 0 and cannot go above what we set the max stamina to. Then connect the return value into the stamina input. So in this part we're taking our stamina we're reducing it by 1 and clamping it out at 0 as its minimal value. And then setting that as our new current stamina each time this is run. Then drag out from the set stamina and create a new branch. And from the output of the set stamina node create an equal node and connect that to the condition of the branch and leave the second input at 0. So we're checking if the player's stamina is 0 or not here. Then alt drag out the is sprinting bool and connect it to the true output of the branch and set its condition as false. And then finally connect that to the movement speed function we created earlier. This means that if stamina is 0 we will set the sprint bool to false and send that information to the function that handles our movement speeds. Now back to the branch and from the false output create a new branch with the is sprinting bool as a condition. Connect the true output to a delay node. The delay node will be deciding how often the drain stamina will be run and therefore how fast the stamina will drain. I'll set this to something low like 0.05 for now. Then finally connect this with the drain stamina custom event again, meaning that while we are sprinting and are not at zero stamina, this script will be reused and drain one stamina each 0.05 seconds until we either stop sprinting or the stamina reaches zero. Now let's quickly set up how to regenerate stamina as well. It's very much like the draining section just with a few adjustments. We'll start by connecting it to our set stamina node and then we can just copy the nodes we made earlier here and just remove the subtract node and change it out for an add node instead as we want to add stamina back with this. Then connect it to the stamina input. From the stamina output create another equal node but for the second input add the max stamina node as well as we want to see if our current stamina is equal to our max stamina or not. Then we create a branch and connect the equal output to the branch condition. Create a new branch from the false output and add a sprinting as a condition. And then connect a delay to false and set the duration of the delay. I'll use the same 0.05 which is how fast the player will regenerate stamina. And then finally connect the delay to the regenerate stamina event. What this does is that when fired it will add one stamina back to the stamina pool, checking if our current stamina is equal to the max allowed stamina. If it is, it stops. If it's below max stamina, we check if we are sprinting since we can't regenerate stamina while sprinting. If we're not sprinting, then the delay fires and runs the script again until we start sprinting or reach max stamina again. Now we need to head back to the movement speed function and complete that as well. From the normal walk speed we want to connect that to the regenerate stamina event and from the sprinting walk speed we want to connect that to the drain stamina event. Finally head back to the event graph and click on the max stamina variable and on the right side at the bottom we see that we can set up the default value for it. This is pretty much how much stamina you want the player to have. I'll set this to 100 for now and then head over to the stamina variable and set that to 100 as well so that we start with full stamina. Now we can give this a quick test and we can see that we can start sprinting and if we continue the stamina will drain and make us walk. While walking a bit the stamina regenerates and we can sprint again. That is it for the functionality and now we'll add a simple stamina bar to the UI to better visualize how much stamina there is. First I'll go ahead and clean up here and comment the different sections. On to the UI bar then. Let's create a UI folder for easier organization. Right click and go to the user interface and then select widget blueprint and user widget. I'll call it stamina. Double click it to enter the editing section. Here you can make a lot of cool UI visuals and functionality but we'll keep it simple here so start with searching in the left section for canvas panel and drag it down to the top of the hierarchy section. This is the base for adding things to the screen and on that we want to put our bar. So search for progress bar 
and drag that down under the canvas panel. Now we have a small bar showing up here. Drag it to wherever you want to have it and resize it as you see fit. I'll put this smack in the middle and make it large so we can see it. Also, don't forget to move this little anchor here to the middle of the bar to make sure it stays in place correctly. To the right, you have a bunch of options for how the bar should function, from uh, the color of the bar, how it should fill up and things like that. I'll make it a nice purple color for now. And then we want to go to the progress section and where it says percent. Click on the button that says bind and select create binding. This will create a function for us connected to how the percent is shown on the bar. We'll do that last though, so let's head over to the event graph section for now. Here we can delete everything except the event construct node, which is what will trigger when this is created. Now we want to connect this to our player blueprint so that we can call on the functions we created there. So from the event construct node, drag out and search for cast to BP first person character. And from the object input, drag out and connect with get player character. In the cast to node, you can right click the as BP first person character output and choose promote to variable and rename it to character ref. Now we have a reference to our player character and can access the variables and things we have created in it. With that done, let's head back to the get percent function we created to set up how the progress bar will work. Let's control drag out the character ref variable and from that search for get stamina and then again with get max stamina. From both the stamina and max stamina nodes, we want to connect them to a two float node each. This is so that we can use decimal numbers instead of only whole ones. Then create a divide node and connect the stamina into the top and max stamina in the bottom. So we will get our stamina and divide it by our max stamina and connect that to the return value of the return node. This means that if our max stamina is 100 and we currently have 30 stamina, we divide 30 by 100 and get 0.3, which is equal to 30% and the progress bar will therefore show 30% full. That's it for the functionality of the bar. So let's compile, save and go back to the player blueprint to make this show up on screen as well. Back in the player event graph, we'll create an event begin play node that will run once the blueprint is created. From this, we'll drag out and search for create widget. And in the class section, we can search for the widget we created. In my case, that would be called stamina. Then from this, connect an add to viewport node and connect the return value to the target. So this lets us create a stamina widget on start and also adds it to the player viewport. And that's all. Let's compile, save and test it out. Here we can see that we have a large purple stamina bar in the middle of the screen now and when we run it will slowly drain, when it reaches zero we cannot sprint anymore, waiting will then fill up the bar again. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and if you enjoyed the content please consider liking the video and subscribing for more content down the road. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day.